Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is the morning after George Cambosis proved me wrong. I congratulate the new champ. Uh, he beats Teofimo Lopez. I thought he won the fight. Let's talk about what surprised me. We'll call them secrets. They're things that you learn. Boxing's a surprising sport. And I misjudged George Cambosis. Let me be the first to say it, right? I don't consider this to be a lucky victory, right? A good night. Cambosis obviously has skills. Let's talk about them. First, let me say the argument for Lopez. The fight, in my opinion, Lopez should have fought. It's the fight he did fight for the first two minutes and 40 seconds of the first round. Right? He comes out, he's very precise. He has a problem with deviation. Right? He's very precise. He comes out in the first round and Lopez is hyper-aggressive. He wants a pocket. He's coming forward. He's practically charging across the ring. He's precise with his punches. He's dominating the fight. It looks like it's going to be a short fight, right? Lopez is landing with his right hand. This is not a firefight. I know they keep saying that on the zone, and I love the zone. But this is not a firefight. This is not two guys fighting over the pocket. Because as Lopez is coming forward, Cambosis is on his back foot. Folks, this is a front foot versus back foot fight. Teofimo dominates the first round. He's dominating it. He's coming in. He's hitting Cambosis. He's flushing him out of the pocket. Now, we needed to maintain that intensity. Every round needed to be like that. But something happens. Cambrosis, who's excellent on his back foot, that's the first secret of the fight for me. Right? Cambrosis, for all the tough guy persona, is excellent on his back foot moving. He's excellent in terms of leaning away from punches. He gets caught with some punches in that first round, but he's leaning and he's moving. He has superior movement to Teofimo Lopez. Well, in the closing seconds of that first round, he gets off a counter overhand right. It has a little bit of a loop on it, just like Nakatani's punches have a little bit of a loop on them. That overhand right drops Teofimo Lopez. Let's not act like it's a flash knockdown. Folks, it hits Lopez on the temple. The way Lopez falls, he wasn't expecting the shot. Right? It's a tribute to Cambrosis that on his back foot, while dodging punches, he has a little opening and he can literally just do a drop step and lean into that counter overhand right. It drops Teofimo. In my opinion, it changes the fight. Let's talk about secret number two. In addition to being able to be offensive on his back foot. Cambrosis has the far superior body movement. In other words, you'll notice he's keeping his upper body out the frame, right? He's moving back on his back foot, but he's not upright. No, this is a guy with a lean, and the lean is all over the place, right? So he can lean this way to get away from a right hand. You'll notice him leaning down, but not over the pocket, right? He's avoiding a pocket. He's moving back while Teofimo is moving forward. Even though Teofimo is on his way to winning that first round before getting hit with a shot, I had that first round a 10-9 round. I thought Teofimo was dominating the first round. 
you notice that Teofimo was having a problem cutting off the ring. Cambrosis, as most back guy, uh, backdoor guys have, knows where he is in the ring. He's not allowing himself to be cornered. So we get to the second round. Teofimo's dad in the corner tells him, hey, look, are you going to get this guy out of here? Right? He wants Teofimo to calm down a little bit. Teofimo, to me, makes the right decision. He ignores his dad. He comes out. He's on fire. He's back to where he was in the first round. He's on his front foot. He's aggressive. But then you notice that Cambrosis isn't phased by it. You notice Cambrosis has figured out the angle somewhat. You notice Cambrosis is able to stay outside, and you also start to notice something else. Because Cambrosis has an excellent overhand right, you notice that Lopez, who has a great jab, doesn't throw it that much. Lopez is afraid of throwing the jab and having this counter overhand right come over it. So Lopez, of course, isn't Lopez. He's been disarmed by his opponent. Right? Let me just say, too, that Cambrosis, here's secret number three, has a great jab. And he has great timing. So, you have a situation where you have a front foot guy, Lopez, having Cambrosis on his back foot. Cambrosis is moving his upper body. Cambrosis is threatening an overhand right. But then you notice that as Cambrosis uses lateral movement, folks, this is not the fight I expected. Right? I thought Cambrosis was going to be blood and guts. No, this is back foot with lateral movement. You'll notice that Cambrosis has a sledgehammer jab. Folks, it's a hard jab. Right? He is able to turn. Right? He's turning as he moves. He's unbeaten for a reason. And he's coming back with a jab. Teofimo starts to slow down, right? Teofimo can't establish his own jab because of Cambrosa's counter overhand right, the threat of it. It's already knocked Teofimo down. And you notice Cambrosa's, as he's moving, is two-handed. In other words, it's not just the overhand right. He also has a right hook to the body. But more importantly, when he swings, Teofimo cannot collapse. Teofimo's right-handed. He cannot just randomly throw punches on the left side of Cambrosis because Cambrosis has a jab, knows how to use it. We get to the fourth round, and you realize something else. This is the next secret. By this point, as you can imagine, after I saw Cambrosis win the first round, after I saw Cambrosis win the third round, as I was watching Cambrosis win the fourth round, I understood, and it was the biggest shock for me, that if a boxing match broke out, and that's what we had, front foot guy against a back foot guy, this is not blood and guts over the pocket. If a boxing match broke out, Cambrosis had the upper hand. That's what happens in the middle rounds. Those are the rounds, I believe, that give Cambrosis the fight. The third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, you're looking at a guy on his back foot 
who is keeping Teofimo honest with that straight right hand up top, and who, when he turns, has an excellent jab, and then the kicker, the next secret is he has a long left hook. In other words, he looks like he's throwing a jab. Guess what? It's not a jab. It's a hook. Guess what? He can be outside. He can pivot, turn that left hand over and hit you with power from distance. This was the setup. The underdog, huge underdog, the guy I was predicting would get stopped was much better than advertised, right? Much better than advertised. Understand, this is the second fight I've seen him in against a guy with an excellent jab. Lee Selby has an excellent jab. So does Teofimo Lopez, where the great jabber can't even touch him. What I want you to do and I thought Sergio Mora did a great job. I agreed with most of Chris Mannix's scorecard on the zone, right? But what I want you to do is to kill the volume and just look at the movement. If you're a the zone subscriber, you actually have the replay on the zone. You can watch it on demand at no extra cost, right? Kill the volume. Just look at the movement. Teofimo Lopez, who starts the fight like a bull, who is crashing the pocket, who has no respect for George Cambrosis. By the third round, he's tentative, right? He's still coming forward, but you notice he's not coming forward as quickly. You notice he doesn't want to trade punches because Cambrosis can actually punch. Right? I was watching the middle of the fight, and I thought to myself, you know what, this, for gamblers, it's an upset. Right? If you were on the Cambosis side of the play, you made a lot of money. But in actuality, it's not that big an upset. Because Cambosis is highly skilled. So Teofimo has his moments. Right, he knocks down Cambrosis uh, in the eighth round or ninth round, somewhere like that. But we reached a point where Teofimo needed to look good in the last two rounds of the fight to have an argument, an argument that the fight was a draw. In other words, Cambosis takes over so much in rounds three, four, five, and six. This is after getting a knockdown in the first round that you understood Cambosis dominated the first half of the fight. Right? I only gave Teofimo the second round. He was down big. So he really needed a big second half to get back in the fight. Let me also say, too, Cambosis does get hit with some big shots. But what's interesting is, as he gets hit with big shots, he's still able to move away. In other words, he has worked on his movement to the point where even when he gets caught flush, when he's not able to roll with the punch, he doesn't panic. You'll notice, too, he's in a Philly shell defense, right? He has his chin tucked behind his shoulder. He has his hands down against a sharpshooter. He moves a lot more than you think, right? Understand, Lomachenko tried to beat Lopez with movement. And Lopez was able to crash the pocket for most of the fight. 
Lopez was able to win the rounds in which Lomachenko's on his back foot. Here, you notice that Cambosis makes it a point to land hard shots every round, right? And you notice that Cambrosis has what I call ring coverage. In other words, he could be far away. He could duck his head and throw that overhand right, right? He's not relying on a right hook, which would have been a shorter punch. No, he knows how to hit you with power from distance. And of course, let me say this, and I know this is controversial. The better part of his game isn't his right hand, even though he drops Teofimo off the right hand, and that right hand neutralizes Teofimo's jab somewhat. No, the best part of his game is the left side. Right, folks, his jab is excellent. Right, his left hook is excellent. You only see it in transition. Let me also say, too, that the spacing is excellent. You'll notice Teofimo throws some jabs that don't reach Cambrosis. But more importantly, Cambrosis doesn't expect them to reach him, right? Cambosis knows the distance well enough where as Teofimo throws jabs from too far away, Cambosis doesn't move. He lets the jab come up short. To sum up, I was dead wrong on this fight. I'll agree Teofimo hits harder than Cambosis. But Cambosis is a master on his back foot, has ring coverage, is the better defensive fighter. Right? Let me also say, too, that it's interesting. Cambosis has a lot of facial expressions during the fight. They work for him. Right? I'm a guy who kind of likes a Sonny Liston type of fighter, right? Where the facial expression doesn't really change. Right? George Foreman, right? Where the facial expression doesn't really change. Guy's a machine. But here, Cambrosis is looking at Teofimo after every round. Right? And he's nodding to Teofimo to kind of let him know, hey, man, I thought you were the favorite. Right? I think that helped draw attention to the fact that he was exceeding expectations. I feel so taken by Cambosis's game. In other words, I was so off the mark here. This is not the fighter I saw before this. But as you watched him, you understood. You don't just hop in the ring and move like this. You don't just hop in the ring and know how to throw a counter overhand right. Right? Also, as successful as that overhand right was, and it's very successful, right? He lands it again at the end of the fifth round. You notice that he's putting in work with the left hooks, excuse me, with the right hooks. Right? I'm not going to touch a fight between him and Devin Haney. I'm just going to enjoy that fight. That's going to be for the undisputed title at 135 pounds. Let me just caution sanctioning bodies too. You need to let that fight happen, right? Fight fans want history. Fight fans understand, given what Canelo's done, given what Terrence Crawford's done, given what Usyk's done, fight fans now understand the importance of undisputed titles, right? Just understand, as good as Devin Haney moves, I suspect that this guy moves as well as he does, right? Cambosis might have more offense, 
Haney Cambosis, that's an interesting fight. Cambosis has gone from being a huge, greater than 13 to 1 underdog, to now being a guy I'm afraid to bet against, against an unbeaten Devin Haney. Right again, this was not a firefight. It's a great fight, but it's not a firefight. It's front foot against back foot. And you notice that when Teofimo was not being hyper-aggressive, right, in rounds three, four, five, and six, you notice that he's being outboxed. That's the fight I saw. Let me hear about the one you saw, right? I thought Teofimo had problems in the 11th round. I thought you knew going into the 11th, that Teofimo needed to finish big, right? He needed to knock Cambosis down again, right? He needed to have some rounds where you thought, oh, that's Teofimo. Then I thought Teofimo went out and lost the 11th round. I thought by the time the 12th round started, the fight was over, barring a knockout. Right? I thought Teofimo got outboxed, not robbed. If he thinks he won this fight 10 rounds to 2, he needs to look at the film. Let's hope he has the common sense to make a gracious statement congratulating the winner. I congratulate George Cambosis. Um, I was wrong on this fight. I really don't have an excuse. I was not expecting all of this. Let me just say, I didn't see a lot of luck. I saw a lot of skill from a guy with an above-average jab, an above-average left hook, above-average ring coverage, certainly above-average movement, and the ability to hang in there and throw counter overhand rights, which takes a lot when you're fighting a major talent like this. Right, Teofimo is a major talent, he might want to think about coming up to 140, right? I got the feeling he didn't have the stamina in this fight to maintain the pace of round one in rounds three, four, five, and six. What he needed to do was to throw caution to the wind, collapse the pocket, fight every round like he fought the first round, right? The more opportunity he gave his opponent to show movement, right? To show the back foot. The more opportunity he gave Cambrosis, the more he was at a disadvantage. That's the fight I saw. Let me hear about the fight you saw in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.